Now it's not true that the solution set of every inequality has numbers at both ends. Right? We can just look at a very simple inequality like x is greater than or equal to 4 to see that. When we sketch this on the number line, well, we start at 4 and go off to the right. There's no right end to that. There's no biggest number that's greater than 4. A number can be as big as it wants and still be greater than 4. But it turns out that this graph is still an interval. How can that be? How could we describe that using interval notation? In interval notation, if our graph has no rightmost point, we use this symbol followed by a round bracket as the right end. Now that symbol, it looks like a sideways 8, but it isn't. It's called infinity. And in interval notation, writing an infinity just means there's no largest number here. To write this symbol, right, start off with a downward to the left stroke, loop around, come back, just like that. If you have trouble writing it like that and you find that they start to look like eights, you can also write it as two circles next to each other. Or, this is kind of an old-fashioned way of writing it, but some people find it easier, kind of a curvy W with a line across the top. This symbol is also infinity. It's a very old-fashioned sort of infinity. Now, this symbol does not represent a number. Among other things, that means that it can't be included in any intervals. It always gets the round bracket. And furthermore, because it means that the interval has no rightmost end, infinity can only appear on the right in an interval. So in our example up here, 4 gets a round bracket because it has a filled in dot, because it's included. And then there's no rightmost end, so we write infinity on the right. Infinity always gets a round bracket. That's what we do if there's no rightmost point. What if there's no leftmost point? What if we have something like x is less than 7? So the graph will look something like this. If there's no leftmost point, then we write negative infinity as the left end. So the negative sign and then the infinity symbol we read as negative infinity. And again, that just means that there is no smallest number. Like positive infinity, negative infinity is not a number. It cannot be included in an interval. It always gets the round bracket. And it can only appear on the left in an interval. So in this example, we have negative infinity, 7. 7 has an open dot, so it gets a round bracket. So we have a process then for writing down an interval once we have the graph. We ask, what's the smallest number graphed here? If there is no smallest number, we write negative infinity with a round bracket. If there is a smallest number, we write it with the appropriate bracket. Round for an empty dot, square for a filled dot. Then we say, What's the largest number? If there is none, we write infinity followed by a round bracket. If there is one, then we write that number with an appropriate bracket. There are two weird sets that I want to mention. Say we have 
x is less than 2 or x is greater than negative 3. What does the graph of that look like? Here's negative 3, here's 2, which means here's x is less than 2, here's x is greater than negative 3. We have or, so we want to be on one or the other or both. The graph looks like this. Remember we said in these cases all numbers are solutions. How would we write that in interval notation? Well, there's no smallest number, so we write negative infinity. And there's no largest number, so we write infinity. If all numbers are solutions, the solution set is the interval from negative infinity to infinity. Right, this just describes all the numbers. The other extreme of weird sets is, let's say we have x is greater than 5 and x is less than or equal to negative 5. Well, here's x is greater than 5. Here's x is less than or equal to negative 5. We have no overlap. Remember we said in this case we have no solution. Now, this is very strange in interval notation. What I'm about to write you is not going to look like an interval. We write this symbol. All right, so this is a circle with a slash through it. The circle does not fill up the whole line of text. The slash is longer than the circle. This just means the empty set. It means no solution. If there's no solution, then this symbol represents the solution set.